is the experience of developing a deep relationship with someone with a view to seeing if marriage is right for the couple without the complexity of sexual intimacy being part of that relationship. Enabling each other to find out everything about each other, developing unconditional love and trust without rushing things to decide if this really is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Today's topic. Today's topic. Cordy versus Davy. Greetings, friends and family. My name is Lamika. And I am Deontay. And this is our channel, Carol's Ever After. Today's topic. Today's topic. Cordy versus Davy. There is a difference. Big difference. Small, big. I would say big difference. Oh, there's quite a difference. And it's something that we've been able to uh, figure out. Sorry. Say hi, Fendi. Say hi, Fendi. Say hi, Fendi. Yes. It's the dog. All right, go live your best life. He got his camera time. <laughs> so today's topic is really a reflection of some distinctions that we've come to know in our journey together. Yes. Um, and so we're hoping to share a um, little bit more information about what our journey has been like um, and our intentionality this time around um, to really help um, individuals who are trying to figure out you know, their journey possibly towards um, a meaningful long-term relationship and marriage. And so... But before we go that far and get into detail, check out the shirts, right? Check out the shirts. The shirts are, were given to us by courtesy of Marriage is Our Ministry. Jody Fletcher and his wife, uh, Tanya Fletcher. Uh, Jody A.K. Yeah. So Jody look them Breezy. up. Look them up on Facebook, Jody Breezy. All right. And her shirt says, I'm his good thing. Yes. And my shirt says, She's everything I ask God. Thank so you so sure, much. Make sure y'all go cop these shirts. Support them, man. Yes. Yes. But back to the topic of the day. Back to the regular scheduled topic. Um, courting versus dating. It's really a reflection of some areas that we've come to know were very distinct this time around um, as we were pursuing a meaningful relationship with each other. And so we were hoping to be able to share that with you all. So there's a couple of areas that we're going to talk a little bit about in this video. One is intentionality. What's the next one? The second one is ex exclusivity. That's it, right? Yes. Exclusivity. And the third one is language. And then the last one, number four, is boundaries. 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 Some relationships don't have boundaries, but we're going to talk about that. Yes. Yes, we are. All right. All right. So the first one is intentionality. intentionality. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Let me start it off with my, my part of that. Okay. Um, so intentionality, um, one of the definitions that I was able to find to really capture. Um, the dis one of the distinctions between courting versus dating is uh, courting meaning to be involved, uh, being involved with someone romantically, typically with the intention of marrying. Yes. Um, and Urban Dictionary, Dictionary ironically, also had um, an interesting definition, which I'll also read as well. And that says, courting is the experience of developing a deep relationship with someone with a view to seeing if marriage is right for the couple without the complexity of sexual intimacy being part of the, that relationship. Enabling each other to find out everything about each other, developing unconditional love and trust without rushing things to decide if this is really the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Really interesting definitions. So intentionality, right? So when you think about courting, there's an end goal, there's a purpose, there's this, um, we're doing this for a reason. Like there's an end goal to this. The end goal is most times should be to get to the altar. And so what are the things, what are the ramifications of the things you put in place to make sure you have not only just a good experience, but a healthy experience. An experience to where you get the most out of it to where when you finally get to the altar, you can honestly say, I know exactly who I married because I was intentional about everything in the process. I was intentional about how I treated you, about the planning. Um, that, that's what courting is really about, the planning. You say, okay, who are we? What are we gonna do? What do we focus on? What is important to us as far as our values, our morals? Are we on the same page about how we wanna raise our children? Right, that's what courting is about. You're literally preparing the two of you all to come together as well. Man, dating, that's something totally different. Dating is a little bit different in yeah. that way. In terms of intentionality, dating is kind of 
more like testing the waters. Um, not really. I think I like you. I think I like you. If you look at our intro, what you will find is there's a little bit of a gap, right? There's a little bit of a gap between us. Um, we're at quite a distance. Um, and in many ways, it symbolizes one of the distinctions um, that we're going to talk about in the video. But we're at a little bit of a distance with each other. Um, we take notice and we lean in a little bit. Um, and sometimes dating can feel like the leaning in a little bit, but still having a little bit of a gap. Um, and then courting, in many ways, is kind of sitting in a more intimate space with one another because there's some intention. Um, there's less distraction, less of a distance in terms of emotions, in terms of a lot of different other areas of the person in, their, in your life. And that's because um, you've gotten to a point where you've not only taken notice of that person, but you also probably have a decent friendship with that person to decide, you know what, I want to um, pursue our friendship on a deeper level with the intention of seeing how our partnership could potentially work out. And so it's more of like a committed relationship um, in that you are taking that new step because you see the prospect of marriage with them. You see that this person is like marriage material and I want to kind of explore what that reality would actually feel like. And so I'm not just getting into a relationship with absolutely no end in mind, but I'm getting into a more intimate relationship with the intention of saying, hey, you know what? Let's see, let's see where this, let's see if we can, I believe that we have what it takes, but let's see how it actually plays out. And so you're not taking that step just to have sex, you're not taking that step just because you think they're fine and you don't want them to have anybody else to have them. You're taking that step because you see a great deal of promise in them beyond just, you know, yeah. feelings and hanging out, you know, Netflixing and chilling and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Dating, I would call dating like this aimless, well, I'm just out just to have fun and see what we can get into, you know. Uh, there's really no end goal, right? And, and sometimes you find that friends with benefits kind of thing fall under that, under that dating thing, mm -hmm. right? And then we want to talk about the exclusivity, but uh, for the most part, there's really no real intention when it comes to dating, you know. I don't know if you feel different than that. Yeah, and I think it also depends on how you kind of define dating. Yeah, because everybody defines it differently. Yeah, in this instance, we're, de we're defining it as like, you know, we text, we talk, no particular commitment here. And for us, in particular, we began our connection through friendship. Yes. And we allow friendship to blossom without any sort of deep expectations of any sort of physical commitments or anything like that. Um, we allow that to blossom and expand so that we really get to know each other on a very intimate level. Mm -hmm. And from that point, we were able to make a conscious decision to choose to pursue courting because I knew him as, as my friend. You know, fundamentally, friendship, I think, is often undervalued, yeah. overlooked, mm -hmm. rushed through in the process. Most of the time, like, ooh, you fine, yeah, let's do this, you know, mm -hmm. and then that is it. But friendship... There is no expect, I'm not expecting you necessarily to, you know, wash my clothes or do anything like that. We're really just in a fundamental way as humans connecting and allowing that connection to show us um, the very natural way that we could partner and things like that. I think to add, you talked about friendship. One thing I want to add is sometimes people wait too late to become friends. Yeah. Like a lot of times people get busy. Friend after we a married. lot of times people people become friends or try to figure out, well, I don't like you as a person. Like, are you really my friend after you done devoted all this time? And after you done got the ring and after y'all bought the house together, you find out you don't gel together well as best friends. You're not even best friends. So it's very important. If you really don't want to waste your time, find out can y'all be really friends first? Do, do I like you as a person? Yeah. yeah. And so we spent the yeah. most time on intentionality because it really anchors the, the, the distinction between courting versus dating. Once you have your intentions, if you even can determine if you have intentions, are there any intentions, what are those intentions, right? Because intentions are not always good. Some people have bad intentions. Once you uh, find out what your intentions are, then and only then can you make your way or begin to make your way into something healthy and really guide you. Probably. So that brings us to exclusivity. 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 That's it. This is really good. Exclusivity. What is exclusivity? It means that certain people are restricted, yeah. uh, or people are restricted in general. And so, with exclusivity, um, 
one of the distinctions we found there is that there is no other, there are no other players in the game, right? Um, you have very clearly decided to, to sit and pursue um, a relationship with this person with the intent of gauging its po its ability to turn into marriage. Um, and again, we're anchored. We can't talk about court in a meaningful way without talking about this end. And so that brings it again back to intentionality, but with the intent of potentially marrying this person. And so um, when we shifted, we spent the most time in the friendship space. Um, and, and then we shifted in, into a courtship and then beyond that, it's like engagement, um, which is where we are now. Um, but shifting, <laughs> um, but exclusivity, um, there is at the point that you've decided to court, it's almost like a pre-engagement in a way, yeah. potentially. Yeah. Um, at, the, at the extent that you've decided to court, you're like, I see a lot of potential for um, us kind of taking a meaningful journey moving forward. Um, and that means that no one else can be in the picture because that's distracting. Right. Right. If we're really in court, courting with intention, then having other people on your line yeah. and on your on your bench waiting like a starting five, you gotta you gotta purge that cell phone a little bit, baby. Purge you know? the inboxes. Mm -hmm. Like get rid of some numbers, even if you had pictures. You gotta get rid of all that stuff to be exclusive. There's nobody to move away. You know, people are going to be messy. People will try to get your people in bars. But, you know, purge it, right? And so, when you think about exclusivity, when you're dating, there's no such thing as being exclusive. Because, like, one minute I'm here, I'm talking to Bay, and then maybe tomorrow somebody else hit me up, and then I'm well, over here. Right? So, one weekend I'm over here hanging out with this person, then next weekend I'm out here at the Ruby Tuesdays with this person, entertaining this person. Like, you're not exclusive. You're not tied down. There's no intention to be tied down. Right, you entertain any and everybody just want to give you a good time, you just going with the flow. That's dating, right? You're dating aimlessly, you just, you know, I'm just going out to have a good time with whoever hit my phone up, or whoever I decided to hit up, that's dating. But when you're courting, I see and want nobody but you, we have made a decision to be in something committed. And I don't care who come my way, I ain't gonna look to the left, I ain't gonna look to the right, I'm gonna look straight at the There's no confusion about yeah, where no we are. no confusion about where you are. Dating. Which really does bring us to the third point, which is language. So language. Um, language is very key here as well because it is a reflection of your intention. It is an expression of your intention. And that language is um, exists in two ways, really. Um, the outward expression to other people, but also the more internal, interpersonal, um, expression that exists between the two of you. There should be at this point really no question of where you sit. Are we together? Are we not together? It, it, it's something that you can verbalize. Ain't no complication ships <laughs> when it comes to courting. And so when, you think, when I think about language as a man, like um, if I'm courting, which I am, well, I had to court to be many I guess you could still say you're courting to if, but my point is when you're courting, right? When I talk to you, I talk to you like I know who you are to me. Like this is gonna one day be my wife. So I'm gonna treat you as such. I'm gonna respond to you as such. I'm not gonna treat you or talk to you as if you just one of my side chicks that I entertain here and there, like, oh okay, what's up? I'm looking at you lustfully and doing all this kind of stuff, right? Because everything's intentional. I'm intentional about how I treat you, I'm intentional about how your place in my life, I'm intentional about how I talk to you. You know, how I touch you, right? There's different things. All of that stuff, that I, my body language to you, right? Do I, do I, does my body language say I'm only around you or with you because I want, you know, that physical stuff? Or does my body language say I respect you as a woman? I respect you as God's child and I respect him. Respect the fact that God brought you into my life for such a time as this to where one day you're gonna be my wife and then when that time comes, then we will explore those other things that come with the, in the confines of marriage. But right now in this particular stage, right, I'm gonna to talk to you with the utmost respect. I'm gonna treat you like you deserve to be treated. I'm gonna treat you as if I am exploring every avenue about the friendship that we have. And, and we're going into it and we're going to delve into that kind of thing. So when I think about language, that's what I think about. Yeah, courting is a very clear conversation. Very you clear. all understand exactly where you sit. There is no question. There is no walking up, 
with someone mm -hmm. and someone says, hey, and you're like, oh, this is Lamika. Lamika, <laughs> but <laughs> you lied. <laughs> Bo user, <laughs> nah, Bo user lied. <laughs> no, I, this is great. This is, this is, this is great. This is my fiance. Yeah. This is gonna be the future of the Like, yo, get it together, get it straight. You follow what I'm saying? I take her, if, I, if I'm going somewhere, everybody gonna know who this woman is. Right, everybody gonna, and so that's that's that language, right? Mm -hmm. you, you you make sure when you walk into a room, they everybody should know that he belongs to you and she belongs to you, or however you know it is. Like that, that's your language, right? Mm -hmm. What's your language? It's an outward expression yeah. of yeah. what is internally, you know, or more intimately happening mm -hmm. happening between the two of yeah. So definitely okay. adjusting, and even the way you create boundaries with your language for other people, mm -hmm. so people understand. So it's very important that you are on the same page that you use your words and if you get in agreement with where things are like where you actually are so absolute transparency your language is a little bit different and it is a tool for creating boundaries which brings us to boundaries Ooh, Ooh. Jesus. Okay. people ain't gonna like this one but what is boundaries 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 okay come on lock so boundaries. boundaries one of the things that we kind of talked about um, as it relates to boundaries is with, with courting, um, the end goal is kind of always lingering in the periphery and like on your mind. With dating, it's almost like, if courting is, is, is about preparing for marriage and taking very intentional steps, um, almost like dieting, right? You diet because you probably have an intention for being more healthy or losing weight. There is a desired outcome in mind, right? Dating is almost like dieting but without any sort of outcome of weight loss or improved health. It's just something I'm literally just starving myself just to starve myself, it's right? Something to do. And so it's a little bit less um, outcome oriented. Um, and with dating, um, with courting, it very much so is outcome oriented. And so being very thoughtful about for us as believers in Christ, um, as, as followers um, uh, uh, of, of Christ, um, we are really holding ourselves accountable um, in a natural sense, but also in a biblical sense as well. And so for us, um, boundaries are particularly important because we want to honor God um, on our path and journey towards marriage. And what that means also is not having sex. Um, what that means um, is taking the measures to ensure that we are thoughtfully taking that path toward a covenant relationship to get not just that permissible okay will but that perfect um to function in the perfect will of god and all the blessings associated with it so again you know sometimes people may not have some of the same types of boundaries um because it's almost like making a sacrifice without any intention but you know it's very 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 intentional i think it's easier to be to sacrifice um it's you should have honestly already gotten that part of yourself together before yeah. you entered a relationship yeah. um which reflects a season of solitude which i think we talked about before or we'll talk about in the future yeah. um but that is one of the one of the things boundaries is is you preparing to really thoughtfully um enter that and you should be always be on the same page, right? So intentional, be intentional about everything. You also have to be intentional about your boundaries too, like from jump, mm -hmm. okay, we're recording. So what are our boundaries about the physical stuff? About have a stuff? conversation. Like you gotta have those tough conversations because you don't want to find yourself later on, waste the time, you didn't got the ring, get it proposed, and then you know you end up breaking the engagement because, or, or, or call it off because y'all haven't discussed boundaries. like. Y'all not on the same page. You have to communicate and be on the same page about where you are. How do you want to forego the courting process? What would you like the stage of engagement to look like, right? What do you want the stage of your marriage to be like the first couple of years, the first few months? To be, you have to communicate and be very intentional about every step, right? Now, when you're dating, kind of really have no boundaries. I don't like to say, kind of really have no boundaries. And this could vary by person. Some people might just naturally have more personal boundaries for themselves and this is no diss to people who are not pursuing a committed relationship i think there's a season and there's a time for everything and we honor people who are in the season of solitude and embrace that um but for the purpose of what we're talking about if you are in some sort of complication or something like that and you're trying to figure out 
well, there shouldn't be a lot of questions here. Um, and so with boundaries, one of the things, one of some of the benefits that we also think about are preventing STDs. Spiritually transmitted demons and diseases. Um, there are things that can very easily, sex is a very spiritual thing. Um, and it is good, it is a part of God's design for creation, it is divine um, in, in, in its essence. Um, and so God desires it for us, but in his perfect time and season. And so what sometimes happens is that people find themselves in relationships, especially when there's no intention and no mindfulness about what the relationship is. It sometimes can make it a little bit easier to cross into the cross the boundaries of sex. Um, and sex can often transfer so like the low soul ties can often transfer spirits that you actually have no power and authority to kind of bring under submission because you're not in covenant. And so it's all, it's just like kind of riding without the brakes, hoping that you won't hit a brick wall. And it's very dangerous um, because you might find yourself developing habits or things or dreaming certain things or desiring certain things that actually aren't really a reflection um, of who you are and your own personality. And the, again, the thing is that the covenant often is a tool for creating authority and power over certain types of things in the spirit realm. And what you sometimes find yourself doing is kind of doing the dance, but without any of the rights, the legal rights and benefits in the spirit to fight certain things. And so if I'm going to come into a sexual relationship, then I want to be able to intercede on behalf of my husband. I want to be able to identify certain spiritual attacks, whether it is uh, loneliness, whether it is um, issues with somebody's self-esteem, whether it is financial, whether like where that there are generational curses here and have the authority to be able to attack those things and not just be bound by them. Because sometimes when you don't create the boundaries around sex, you find yourself wrestling with someone else's demons, but again, not having as much power to really be able to attack it and to bring it under submission together. And so um, that preventative measure using protection for your covenant by abstinence and by celibacy really does help you to come to a very thoughtful space where you're not hiding in the sheets, you know, hiding your secrets, hiding these issues. That is my nephew, be crying. He's okay, this is real life. <laughs> this is not a set. Um, but again, you know, you have to be very, very careful. And so it was absolutely essential, essential for us um, with our intentionality um, to be very thoughtful about not crossing that boundary because we don't want any sort of spiritual attacks. It's already hard enough having a relationship nowadays, right? It's already hard enough for black love to really be able to thrive. We don't want to add any additional <laughs> layers um, of complication, um, especially on the spiritual tip, right. right? These are unseen attacks that often happen more than necessary. Right, and so for me, I've always, I have to say, um, sex before it's time, or sex before, or, or, or bringing sex into a relationship outside the confines of marriage, it will cause you to make long-term decisions on temporary feelings, right? And so most times we get so distracted because of the sex because it was good, mm -hmm. and then we forget to really realize or try to find out, hey, let me put that stuff aside and let me get to know you for you. Mm -hmm. Let me get to know who you are. What makes you quirk, right? Um, what are the things that, can I get to know you spiritually first? Like, how do you function in the spirit? Do you have a relationship with God, right? What are some of the things that, that, that might not be, you know, the good things about you? Can I find out all I can about you as a person? Can, can first of all, when you think about sex, right, you, you get naked. Well, can you get naked with me emotionally? Can you get naked with me spiritually? Right? Financially. Financially. What is the truth about all about your debt? Like, what is the truth about you got student loans? Like, I mean, it's fine if you have them. Okay. Be transparent about that stuff because let me give me the opportunity to make a decision to say, hey, I want to take this apart. Because guess what? Your issues become my issues and vice versa. Right? So sometimes we miss all of that. We miss all of that wonderful stuff that we need to find out. And we find out about it later on, after we got married, we find out, we find ourselves in situations to where we wonder why the divorce rate is so high. Hey, we've been divorced, we can talk about it, right? Because we have made long-term commitments and decisions on the temporary feelings, but somewhere down the line, 
there was a, a, a crack or a hole, you know, in the courting process, or we thought we were courting, but we were actually dating, right? And we didn't take it serious. And so, do we have, you know, that physical deception? No, because I really wanted to get to know her. I've been married right before. I ain't trying to go down that road again to make it the same, you know, uh, decisions. I want, if you want to do, if you want something different, you gotta do what? Do something different. And so. Yeah, yeah. Boundaries helps you to, to be, be very clear headed and thoughtful and mindful um, with regard to your intentionality. And so, you know, it, it's, it's super important um, and it makes it easier to, to have that degree of focus. Yeah. Um, nothing getting in the way, you know. And this is not yeah. to say that you don't have those feelings and urges and mm -hmm. those hormones and all that stuff. Come on, be mm -hmm. real, right? That stuff is going to be there. You should desire you should. your... I, don't, I wouldn't want to marry nobody that I'm not attracted to that, that, that doesn't, you know, do anything for me in that way. However, right, but uh, one of the dangerous men or women of God in the world, uh, one, of the dangerous, one of the dangerous things about a man or woman of God is a man or woman of God who has no discipline. Right? And so if you have no discipline, you become reckless. Right? You do any and everything. Nothing is off right. Nothing is 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 off bad is off uh, is off restriction for you or anything like that, right? And so when you think about boundaries, you think about restrictions, but it, sometimes restrictions are good. Yeah. Restrictions are good, right? It's, it's it's like a narrow focus and look at it that way. It narrows your focus. There will be a time to explore in a broader sense things with, with that person, but it, it narrows your focus and your intentionality um, and your mindfulness and your thoughtfulness. You are like preparing for a marathon and your diet has to be right. You have to be in shape because when you get into covenant, the enemy is going to come at you with all sorts of arrows and all sorts of attack. And so it's very important that you are very as mindful and intentional and thoughtful in a season where you can thoughtfully prepare in a more objective way um, and explore the depths um, of your relationship and of that person to be very um, conscious of, about the things that need to be put in place, the safety measures that need, need to be put in place prior to marriage and while you are married. So. Yeah. Those boundaries also help you to catch any problems or anything that needs to be fixed, right? Um, before you tie the knot and open that door to everything that marriage has to offer, right? And so what I mean by that is, I did not know, and I'm just being transparent, I did not know a lot of the issues, deep rooted issues about myself, you know, until I had started going to counseling. And if sex was on the table, I would have never caught none of that until later on down the line. Right? There were some things that I didn't, I didn't even realize that I was dealing with and you know, allowing her, opening up to her and her being involved. And we're gonna talk about that in a future video about um, counseling, the spiritual and the, 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 what do you call that? The clinical counseling, mm -hmm. right? And do you need both? And so, um, so for me, that was the benefit for me for having boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Was because I was able to deal with Deontay. And then not only that, I found out, Deontay found out, that this is the awesome, the best partner I could ever have. Because when I was going through kind of like a rough patch in our courting, we were, we were engaged by then. In our in the courting engaged process, I found out how solid she was as a partner to where she could know the toughest, the things that I would wrestle with the most, you know, and help me work through those things, you know, and, and work through those challenges, you know. And so for me, it was like, okay, Right. I, I, I can see her. I can see the kind of partner she is. Like if I'm, if I, if I need my arms lifted up, you know, spiritually or whatever, or, with, or in whatever way possible, she was gonna hold me down because I saw it before she got that last one her finger. I saw it in the engagement process. Like could we, in order to do that and to get to that phase and, and to get to that level, that kind of, you know, commitment, you really gotta take some stuff off the table that don't need to be there too early, you know. And so. Bottom line, the benefits for me when it came to boundaries was I got to see how good of a partner, how awesome she was as an individual, how much she had my back when people didn't even realize that she ain't just a, just a pretty face. Like she got so much in there as a person that I was able to find out just because this go round, beyond taking made a decision to take sex off the table. You know, and I know it's hard. It's hard because you're talking to a man who had an addiction. 
who was married once upon a time. So how do you go from that to married. how do you go from that to not having any kind of physical anything? Right? And so it's like a almost like a culture shock, you know? Like you go from doing one thing in life to now you have these restrictions and you're trying to honor God and do everything God's way. And so I mean I just get the benefits to say, hey, you know, my heart, my walk with God, everything that I don't let anybody and everybody touch is safe with her. And he said a key word, culture. And I think yeah. this is a great way for us to kind of oh, wrap yes. up the video. Um, ultimately, courting is about shifting, a shift in the culture of your connection and partner and, and relationship with someone. Um, it's a very distinct type of shift. Um, and it helps you to prepare um, for or explore what potentially the culture of a long-term commitment could look like. And so you don't wait again to begin to treat people in a certain way. Um, there are certain exceptions for this, but you know, your, your mindfulness and your reaction, your actions and behaviors, you're not going to start being a husband when you actually become a husband. You are actually have that capacity to be a husband and demonstrate it in many ways before you actually take that step. And so that a woman or a man can make an informed decision about whether or not they can take that leap with you and courting helps you to be able to do that. Um, it is, and that's why it's, it's great and important to have a very clear distinction because you're not going to do some of the things when you're just dating. Um, that you would do when you're courting in terms of the person. And so, you know, courtship, culture. It's a culture for marriage. It, it gives you an insight into the culture of the potential marriage. And so we hope you enjoyed this video. We accept any questions that you may have. Um, and we are not calling ourselves experts on the topic. We're more so just sharing our journey and the perspective that our journey and our experiences have shaped. Um, we love you so much. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram at Mika Bear, Mika Bear 88. <laughs> Mika Bear 88. And follow me, Deontay Curl, on Instagram. And do me a favor, like the channel, yeah. share the videos. We got a plethora yes. of them. Turn on those notifications. Turn on the notifications. Hit that bell. Hit the bell. Beep. So every time we post Beep. a video, it's going to come to you. Yes. You're going to get the notification. Curls of an app. I am Deontay. My name is Lamika. Yes. And we love you. Be breezy. Be breezy. You know I was watching House of Pain. Oh my God. Bye y'all. Be breezy. Bye. Oh, get your shirt too. And get a shirt. Get shirt. <laughs> All right, hey. we out. We out. No, like we really out this time. Fendi. <laughs>